as we start logging on here, welcome to the Heat Press for Profit. And this is the jersey selection. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to uh, get into Pathable and sign on. Um, I hope that you're enjoying the Heat Press for Profit so far. Um, we've got a lot of time and energy and there's so much great information here. Um, and I'm excited to share my part of it. So um, we'll give it a minute or two. As we go, some housekeeping. If you could remember to put your comments and your questions in the Pathable site um, and not in your Zoom site, the, the Zoom chat is disabled, so they won't see your questions. So please, in the Pathable chat area. Um, the second thing, we're happy to answer any questions as we go along, so make sure you, you type them in there. Um, now, as we go, I'm gonna jump from camera to camera. We're gonna kind of walk through uh, some slides and we're gonna talk about the different functionality of, of the heat press as we do some application. I'm gonna show you a soccer jersey. We're gonna do a volleyball jersey, which should be fun. We got some different, or I've got some different application processes, some hard to hit application areas. So I'm excited about that. And then uh, again, if you got any questions. So with that, let's I'm gonna jump right into this. So welcome to Heat Press for Profit as we walk through jerseys, right? And jerseys can be that, or team uniforms can be that area which a lot of people are kind of dabbling in and there's a lot of different sports out there that you can do. There's a lot of different application processes. It might be t-shirts, it might be jerseys it might be tank tops or reversible jerseys so as we kind of go through this i've got some examples here but keep an open mind that the options are really unlimited um, of what you can do and can't do and when we talk about team sports you know it ranges from little league to the major league right um, the sports market as a whole is about a 90 billion dollar arena all right and of that you have your media of course you have things like you know bats and equipment and nets but you your largest part of that sporting industry is apparel whether it be the team jerseys um, or pants or if you climb into things like you know fanware um, ultimately the last heat press for profit, I did a fanware section and, and fanware again is huge. And when we talk about the transfers that we do here on the Jersey, I want you to keep an open mind and understand that you could take those same transfers and application and put them on the fanware and upsell your items. All right. So keep that in mind, but really it all begins around that uniform, right? That identity for the team the identity for the group as a whole as if you're in a baseball team or a traveling baseball team if you look in the stands every single parent matches the team right i mean they're proud of it they're proud of of their child playing they're proud of they support their favorite player if it's a professional sport it's just out there and it and it never ends so keep that in mind um, the team look, you know, is, is important, but when we talk about application and putting it all together, we want to understand that there's a couple of things that really set you apart from everything else, right? Uh, if you're just getting started in the team uniform business, you want to make sure that you're putting a product out there that is reliable and that the quality is there. I mean, we've all gone through some hard times where maybe we've done an application and, and we didn't do it correctly, or you know we've had something that's a hard to hit area and, and we weren't thinking about all the variables that are involved in it. So you know it gets out there and then you have a problem in it coming back or the quality just not being what you want. Um, and that's an issue, right? Because you wanna provide the best quality that you can. You wanna continue to have that dependable service that brings people back. Um, both in a customer service aspect, as well as a product aspect. Um, you know, people like dealing with people. They're willing to pay a little more if their experience 
big word experience is, you know, of par or a great experience or great quality. So the things that we put forward, how we deal with the people and the product, your product as a whole is important. All right. So I, when you're doing application and when you climb into that team uniform or something, you want to make sure that you've got a, a jersey that's high quality, your application is up to par, and the products that you're putting on them are reliable, right? Um, you know, you could save money in different places. You could find a product that may be a little bit cheaper or, you know, was in the back of the closet that was a free sample and you pull it out and you try to put it on. You know, you, first of all, you don't know how long it's been there. You don't know the integrity of it. Um, you, you buy something off eBay or something like that, you know, because it's cheap. Well, man, I'm getting, you know, 25 yards of white for half the price of my normal retailer. And there's a reason it's half the price, right? Maybe it's not to the quality that you need or need to put out in your customer base. So as we talk about fall and, and team sports, we kind of wanted to focus on what sports are out there. And I wanted to talk around the products that we put on those different jerseys and applications. So with fall, you've got football, you've got soccer, volleyball and cross country, just to name a few. And as we look at those sports, we're gonna put a different application for each different jersey. Um, in the football, we're gonna start with something that's completely durable um, to put on the jersey so they can go through the contact and soccer. We're gonna talk about sublimation a little bit. And in volleyball, same thing, stretchy dye material. And then a way to do cross country where we've got a product that goes across multi different uniforms, right? We're not just doing a soccer uniform or we're not, you know, just a whole set of 12. Cross country takes shirts. They've got reversible shirts. They've got shorts. It's kind of a, you know, a cross gamut. So we're gonna look at how we can kind of do that application process and get through the mix buying one set of transfers. All right. All right, first, I want to talk about football. Football, contact sports, product line, thermal film. Why thermal film? Um, it, first of all, it's it's tough. It's the best. It does not come off. It is where the industry started. It's been around forever. It will last. You can't crinkle it. You can't pull it off. And you definitely can't score it, right? Um, it has a quick application. It's layerable so you can put one up two up even three if you wanted to get that thick but it will outrange the garments now the products that it'll go on thermal film would be a cotton and a polyester um, keep in mind that thermal film too is a product that has many different sports colors so it's aligned with your navies your reds and royals that kind of fit that everyday sports uniform color right i mean you've got a couple shades of navy but it's all pretty close so thermal film kind of fits that that thing um, and before i forget um if you have your heat press for profit packet your marketing kit from stalls you can kind of follow along and i'll touch on that at the end and tell you which transfers in there as we walk through them um, and you can take a sports jersey or get something and put it on and, and test your product there i think that one's called think outside the box with some pretty fine detail so again sports thermal film for your sports uniform great product Next, we kind of want to talk about, or I want to talk about um, football and upselling, right? We've got our sports film, we got our regular product, but what if we wanted to put something on the jersey that's a little more high end, right? Um, and custom cut sim stitch is that product. It looks like it's embroidered with no machine time. So it's just made out of permatoil, it's heat applied, it goes on at your normal temperature, I think it's 350 for 10 seconds. 
um, and it will look from a distance like it's embroidered. It's layerable and it's definitely an upsell, right? Um, this product is great for team jerseys. It's also great for fan wear out in the field. You can charge a premium cost for it. We all know that applique kind of sticks out. It looks like that higher end product with a cheap price tag, but you know, we don't all have embroidery machines to actually put that product on. And that's where custom cut sim stitch comes in. Um, it's available in services. You can pick letters, you can pick pre-space. What's fantastic about it is if you have letters across any word, any way, you'll get it already lined up. So if you have Wildcats or, um, you know, Thunder or something like that, it will come ready to apply for you. You pull the backer off, you stick it on, you press it. And if you did a two layer application, you press the once for the bottom background layer for a couple seconds and then press the top layer and it looks fantastic, right? Again, custom cut sim stitch is a product that you can use for fan wear as well as the jersey. So it stays on the field and in the stands, all right? All right, so let's talk about soccer for a second, and let's talk about the problems and where soccer lies. Soccer is taking off like gangbusters, right? You got a lot of different travel teams. It's the most played sport of the youth. So there's plenty of opportunity out there to do decoration in those types of jerseys. One problem with soccer is it, most of the jerseys that you see are dyed or sublimated. And if you don't know what sublimation is, you basically have a polyester fabric and you've got an ink that when heat is applied, it gases off into the garment, giving it that look. Now you, there's nothing on top of it. So if you see that blue and white striped jersey, that's a sublimated jersey with the number 10. And oftentimes with sublimation, when you put heat to it or over time, that gas comes up through the transfer. And if you see on the slideshow, you see the 32 there. And if you look at the three, you've got a little bit of dye migration coming through. And that's from those gases um, coming up on the red jersey. It'll sometimes turn it pink. For this instance, it's got those black dots, so you can kind of see the dots coming through that white and not giving it that clear effect. Now on the right side, that number two is, our, is the stall silicone dye block. And what that is, is it's blocking the dye migration. And, and technically it's not really blocking it, it's just not allowing that dye to come up and dye the transfer. So we say it's dye blocking, but it's not actually attaching to it. Um, back in our thermofilm, I failed to mention, thermofilm does also have a dye inhibitor. Now it won't completely block it like the silicone dye block, but it will fight against it, right? Um, the other thing that you have to worry about is not only in the sublimation and that dye coming through, sometimes you'll have a fabric that just isn't set good and maybe it's heavily dyed red or maroon or navy and it's just not set good so even though it's not sublimated the dye is not secure so when you press something on it sometimes you'll get that color coming through uh, if you're trying to put a white number on that navy maybe it'll turn a little bit gray um, if you're trying to put that white number on red obviously in the picture it turns a little bit pink or if you have black and you're putting a white number, it's going to turn a little bit gray. Um, again, if you're, what I like to do, and I'll show you when I switch cameras here and we do the application on the soccer jersey, I sometimes like to take a little piece of product on the underside, give it a quick press and let that, you know, give it 24 hours and see if it migrates. You might not have a problem. You might, you just don't know. That's why we constantly are telling you know, customers to test, test, test. And you're saving a jersey if you've got a little piece and you put it on the inside. So great product facts about silicone dye block is it does block the dye block. 
It has an excellent stretch for athletic wear and it's a low heat application. So we're not really scorching too much of the garments. I think if anybody's done some heat pressing, you get that large square that Jenna talked about a little bit earlier, how to get rid of it. Well, we got to watch our temperature and our pressure, right? So I'm going to switch screens back here and we are going to put some silicone dye block on our jersey. Oh, and bear with me because I do have a headset on. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. That'll be the best way here. So we'll stop share, switch videos. All right, again, bear with me for the headset. Um, so here I have my uh, Fusion IQ heat press. And what we're going to do is, is this heat press, I won't get into it too much, but it swings away to get my heating element out of the way. I have it set for silicone dye block. So I got my time, my temperature, and my pressure in there. Um, I've got the things that I'm going to need to do my heat press application on my soccer jersey. I got my soccer jersey, of course. I've got my silicone dye block front logo. Um, I've got a pair of shorts here. I've got a six by 10 plan, which I'm gonna use for the shoulder. So we can put that logo on the shoulder. And then I got my pillow here um, as well. So I've got all the application things I need. Now, they might not be perfect for the, for the different jobs, but they're perfect for this job. And the only thing I can I can't express more is time, temperature, and pressure is so important. And if you don't have the right tools, you can't complete the job accordingly. So the first thing I'm going to do is because I have the fusion, I have this threadability on the bottom. So I'm going to sleeve my jersey. And this jersey is by Augusta. And remember, I talked about putting maybe something on the jersey to see if it migrates. And what I like to do like I said, is I'll flip the sleeve over and right here on the inside, I'll cut a little bit of a piece, put it there, close it down, make sure that sublimation or that dye doesn't come. I'll come the next day and then actually do my application. But for this, I know it's obviously not, this isn't sublimated, it's dyed, but with our silicone dye block, I honestly don't have to worry about it because I know that it's gonna block it. So I'm gonna sleeve or thread my jersey on I'm going to make sure it's lined up, pull it back a little bit and get that collar off the press. And then I am going to set my Teflon sheet and protect my jersey. Now, again, time, temperature and pressure. I can't say it enough. I'm gonna close my press without my transfer on there and I'm gonna give it a quick press and make sure my pressure is where it needs to be. So at the same time, I'm adjusting my pressure with my knob, which is perfect for this time. I'm also getting that moisture out of that garment so it doesn't affect my transfer. Mm -hmm. Get my top cover sheet, protective cover sheet out of the way. I've got my silicone dye block. And if you, you might catch a view where this has got holes for the different areas in the letters. And that's just because we've lasered this rather than cut it out on our on our vinyl cutter that's behind me. I've actually lasered it out, preparing the cavities to fall out and I don't have to worry about them and sitting there and weeding. So if you have a laser, keep in mind that a lot of the products are laserable. So for this instance, um, I'm just gonna give it a quick hand measure, make sure I'm three to four fingers down, um, obviously, and lined up in the middle. You can take more time, you can use a laser system, but it's pretty easy, easy for me to get a quick lineup. I've done a lot of them, so I kind of know where I'm at. I like templates. I like cutting templates out of cardboard and those types of things rather than trying to measure because it's a little bit quicker. And I'm going to do my application. Right? So silicone is three, or 290 to 300 for 10 seconds with a medium pressure. So I'm set there. It's perfect. And as it goes through, I need to keep in mind that the silicone dye block for this is a cold peel, right? So what does that mean? It means it needs to cool all the way down before I can peel it. I don't want to just peel it off hot. I run the risk of that adhesive not setting in. Um, so I'm not going to peel it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off. 
I know I've got another side application for the sleeve, which with another product I'll talk about in a minute, but I'm gonna set this aside and move on to my soccer shorts that I'm gonna decorate at the same time. And we'll come back and peel that in a second. Does it take extra time? It may, if we're not hot peeling it, but I don't think that that is a, you know, a product killer or an application killer because we are moving along, you know, right? We can do our application, we can do all our jerseys, we can set them aside and we can come back. Um, so here, and that's what I'm doing. I've got another set of shorts from Augusta, soccer shorts, and I'm gonna do a number on the bottom. Now, we've got on this heat press, we've got all kinds of seams, elastic, everything up here. So I need to take and elevate this area out of the way of everything else. Now I could switch my plan, which I'm gonna do in a second to do the sleeve. But in this case, I'm going to use a print perfect pad. All right, this was an eight by 10 print perfect pad that I've cut up, um, available on the stall site. They're thick, high density rubber made of the same thing that the platen is made of. And I'm able to kind of elevate my number in my application area up off the garment. So giving me a flat, good place for, again, time, temperature, and pressure. So I have my silicone 24, but first I'm gonna put my cover sheet on, protect my upper platen, right? And adjust my pressure while getting the moisture out. So obviously we've come up quite a bit on that lower platen. So we need to make sure that we adjust that pressure back, right? So there it is. So I got a medium pressure. I'm relieving the moisture out of the garment as well as getting it ready. So I'm set with my, my application space. All the other things on the platen don't matter because my print perfect pad has elevated it up out of the way. So I'm gonna give it a quick lineup. Again, just by sight, knowing where it goes get a view. Again, you can use a ruler, you can use a template, you can tape it down, um, you can kind of preset it and, you know, tape them down, but you can't really preset and line them all up in advance because you worry about, you know, you got to, you got to get that preheat out of the way. All right. So I'm going to cover up with my protective sheet, spin my Fusion IQ around and get a quick press. Um, again, 10 seconds, peel cold. So at this point, it's going to pop and I am going to, again, set it aside. Could I peel it hot? Maybe, but we don't wanna run the chance. We don't wanna run it, ruin the shorts. We don't wanna ruin the transfer. And again, we can continue to move on without worrying about this. So I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna go back to my jersey, right? Here's my top jersey that's now completely cooled off. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pull just to make sure that we've got a good stick and then I'm gonna pull it quickly, All right? Set that aside and look at our silicone dye block, right? Bright white on that teal jersey, it looks fantastic. I'm confident that I'm not gonna get any dye migration here. Um, the low application temperature did not give me a scorch mark. Now it did iron it out, but I don't want you to, you know, confuse that with a scorch mark because it's just smooth here and a little bit wrinkled here. All right. Now the Jersey's not done. We got an alternate location. I do really have this in the slide, but I have a another product real quick. And this is a full digital product. This is a sublimation or subless stop transfer, a full digital transfer. And this one actually has a dye blocking backer on it. So it's, it's got a black back. Um, some people call it a charcoal back, but it's definitely a different color and that's to block the migration. So um, to get that on the shoulder, I am going to change my lower platen. You're gonna see me do this a couple of times. So I'm gonna pull this big 16 by 20 off and I am going to put a six by 10 on it, lock it down. Again, making the job easier by having the right equipment, right? Um, it just, I can't say it enough, it is so important. 
So we're going to put this on the left sleeve. Now the left sleeve, I am able to, again, because I got that six by 10, I can sleeve it on and get a good application area. Now I got a solid seat seat. Ugh, I got a solid steep. One more time. I've got a seam or a fold mark in there so I can really line it up good off the fold mark. Um, I looked at the garment before I put it on and this, the fold mark is in a perfect place for me. So we're good there. So I did a little bit of pre pre qualifying the garment before I put it on. Now, almost forgot, I wanna spin my platen around. And because the application process on this is a little bit different, I am going to change my selector and I'm gonna to go to heat transfer sublistop. Now again, great things about this press is I don't have to go through and look for the different things. It's already here. I select it, if I hit it right, and it gives me my time, temperature, and pressure, all right? Again, I plan out this accordingly, so I've got the right temperature. We don't have to wait for the press to go up and down, and I can press it. Now, you might be thinking you forgot your transfer, but that's okay because time, temperature, and pressure. Again, I'm going to adjust my pressure while getting the moisture out of my garment. So there it is, medium to firm pressure. Give it that full four to five seconds preheat. Uh, a good thing about that IQ is it gives me the first timer for my preheat and then it jumps over to my application process. So I don't have to worry about, you know, counting off seconds or that because it's already there. I'm gonna lay my transfer down real quick, fold it and give it kind of a center, line it up on my seam that I know is there. I can still kind of see about an inch up from the process and drop it down. Good thing about this transfer, it's got a line right up the logo, so it gives me a good sight. So again, different products that we weren't really talking about, but easy application to put on there and upsell that garment, right? Multiple locations, you can upsell the product and get a little more from it. You might just put a name and number on it, but now we've got a different application area which is going to give us another hit, another couple dollars, another transfer cost, upsell, right? So there we are, full digital on the sleeve. Again, it's a die blocker, so we're not worried about that. And we've got our top jersey at that point in time. I'm gonna pull my shorts back up, peel it just a little bit to make sure it's stuck, which of course it does. And now I've got my full uniform set up with three applications. Now we could put a name and number on it, but I'm gonna show you that on our volleyball jersey in a minute. So heavily dyed garment with that color, dye blocking silicone to stop that migration, multi-location area. So I got the shirt in two places, I got the shorts. So we're getting an upsell and we can make a profit, all right? Question, John. Yep. Uh, so Shauna Ray is asking, does the pressing require the Teflon sheet or does craft paper work? Craft paper works perfectly. Um, everybody has their preference. I enjoy the craft paper a little bit better because I feel like it doesn't retain the heat and doesn't burn my fingers. But this nonstick sheet works a lot better. It lasts a lot longer. Teflon, especially when you're doing soccer jerseys or those heavily dyed um, sublimation jerseys or heavily dyed jerseys, the craft paper will take some of that color. And if it does, that's going to transfer if you've got some white spots where this Teflon sheet won't. So again, it's probably better to have both things on your working table just in case. But if you're doing cotton, the craft paper works great. If you're doing a polyester or sublimation, the Teflon sheet or nonstick sheet would work probably a little bit better. All right. All right, let's clean up my work area a little bit, get this locked down, and I'm gonna step back to my computer and look at the next slide. So let's switch this back again, easily changeable platens for my different location. Drop it right off, lock it in, all right, perfect. All right, so I know I'm going to my next product, so I'm gonna switch my time right here 
and let this press do its thing for a second and get to that next product temperature. So let's have a seat. See if I can do this a little faster when I share my screen. And there we go. Maybe I've mastered it. All right. So soccer, again, silicone dye block. Now you can put other things on it like your thermal film, but this product is amazing. Um, comes in a few colors. You don't have the quite as big as a selection, but if you're doing it for sports, most likely you're probably doing white or red or blue or something like that. So you're right in that realm. All right. All right. So next thing I want to talk about is volleyball jerseys, which is another fall sport. And Premium Plus. Now, Premium Plus is a product that gives us a couple different options. Now, the color gamut is high. We have 40 plus colors at this point. But the great thing about Premium Plus is originally it was released with a low tack option. And since then, we've released it with a high tack option. So, what does that mean? That means the low tack option, you, names and numbers and logos are fantastic. High tack option, if you want to cut a little bit more detail, it makes for a better, you know, a better time at the weeding table, right? Because it's sticky. If you pull up something that you're not supposed to pull up, you can put it down easily. All right. Premium plus is thin, it's soft, it's it's silky matte finish, and it comes in high tack or low tack. Um, it's also stretchable, as you can see, she's pulling her jersey. Um, all products have a four-way stretch where garments normally have a two-way stretch. So you can pull it up and down or you can pull it side to side and the product will rebound, you know, better than the actual garments, right? So Premium Plus, I, I think it's a fantastic product. I actually have a pair of shorts that, basketball shorts that I put Premium Plus on way back at a coach's meeting almost 10 years ago and the product is still on there i wash them all the time i wear them to the gym they you know the product is degraded a little bit but so have the shorts i mean i probably need to get rid of them but the but it's still stuck it still looks good um i don't have them close to me or i'd show you it it just lasted forever um and, you know, it's probably one of my favorite products on the thing. So let's switch back to the other camera again real quick. And I, I promise you I got this in control. So we'll look at the, we'll look at the heat press and we'll do that volleyball jersey and we'll do some different applications. How are we doing on time, Shauna? Pretty well? It's 2.34. Okay, so we have plenty of time. Yep. And while you're doing that, uh, we have a question from, from Patricia. Okay. She wants to know what you mean by low tack and high tack. Perfect. So if I pull this transfer up, and this is the name and a number, a low tack product is, or a high tack product is going to have a sticky backer, right? So if we pulled that letter off a little bit, we would be able to stick it back on. Um, which would be a high tack product. A low tack would be like our silicone dye block, where if the carrier is not sticky at all, if you pull it off, you're gonna have a hard time getting it back on. Maybe you can tape it or something like that. But a low tack and a high tack refers to the carrier, right? Low tack and high tack, and don't quote me on this all the time, but normally if you've got a sticky carrier, it means it's a hot peel. If you got a uh, non-sticky carrier most of the time it's a cold peel again not every time but it's a pretty fail safe theory to have right all right so here i got an allison jersey uh, volleyball jersey from you know that's green and we're going to put some neon yellow on it um, it's going to turn out good so the difficulty here is probably the size of the jersey right um, we're going to do a front. We're going to do a back. Um, I'm going to put something right here on the sleeve to kind of use our pillow and get a better application to help upsell product. But what we have to worry about is I'm able to sleeve this over because it's a medium, a women's medium. So it will sleeve over my platen with no problem. 
But if you have a jerseys or something that's smaller, you don't want to try to put them on where the jersey's stretched, right? Um, that's where that 11 by 15 platen comes into play. And I have the six by 10. I don't have the 11 by 15 here. But if I had an opinion that 11 by 15 would be the most important plan next to your platen that you get. It just fits you sizes. It fits small garments, allowing you to thread it over, thread your garment over the lower platen, all right? So we lucked out today with my samples being a medium. So I'm gonna put it on there. I'm gonna line it up a little bit. Again, I'm doing it pretty quick. I'm gonna drop the front seam out and I'm noticing I've got very little things on top of the platen. My seam at the bottom just falls off. My seam at the on the shoulders, they're barely on. I don't think that's gonna cause a problem because we're not gonna be anywhere near it. But if they were on or on deep, we'd worry about our pressure, right? So I'm gonna cover this up and we're gonna do a front logo. My temperature should be to temp, which it is. And I'm going to adjust my pressure, right? Uh, we had that little one under, so they're not all exactly the same. A little bit more. Perfect. So we've got our medium pressure. We're going to let it count down and do our moisture out of the garment and kind of pull it aside. All right. Remove my Teflon sheet. Again, protects the top and the bottom and get my front logo. So this is Beach Bums Volleyball. Um, not sure why we have a beach bums volleyball with a long sleeve jersey, but you know, I don't know, maybe we're, we're on a cold beach somewhere, right? So we're going to say it down again. We lasered these all products. Most of the products that stalls offers are laserable. So we drop our cavities out to save us some weeding. We're going to drop it on here. I know I'm going to go, I've got a V-neck. I want to put the logo in the front fairly high because it's a women's jersey and get it a little bit lined up, two fingers, and we're golden. So cover my sheet, check my platen, and close it down. Now, Premium Plus High Tack is a warm to hot peel. So with the silicone, I was able to set it aside and move on. Here, I don't have to. I'm going to be able to push it up, kind of get my press out of the way, get my Teflon sheet out of the way, and I can give it a second, knowing that it's a warm to hot peel, and go a little bit slow at the beginning and peel it back, and it's perfect. All right. Again, low temp application. We're only going at 290 to 300, so I'm not getting a scorch mark, right? Um, we got that medium pressure. We could back the pressure off, but if we back pressure off or lower temp, we might not get the application that we need. Again, it's important to follow the instructions of the product that we're putting on. We need to activate that adhesive, all right? So we're set on the front. I'm going to spin this and I could have spun it around on my lower platen um, because it's sleeveable. I can flip it real quick and put the back on immediately, but I wanted to show it. So I'm going to spin it around, kind of line it up. We're going to put a name and number. Now, this is a perforated number from Stall Services. It's Premium Plus. You're able to upload team names and numbers and individual player names and the player perfect. And then this has the perforated effect. So it's got that, um, the dots effect. I forget what it's called offhand, but there's different patterns that you can put on, giving it the ability to breathe, right? We all want it to breathe. Um, some people say that vinyl's hot or doesn't breathe. Well, obviously here's your solution, right? I'm gonna line it up, it's pretty narrow. I'm gonna give it my finger space from the top. Kind of line it up in the middle, make sure I'm straight. My garment's still straight. I've got lack of seams. There's a little bit right here, but it shouldn't cause a problem because it's pretty flat. Put my Teflon cover over the top. I almost forgot. I almost forgot what I forget to do. I forgot to do my pre-press. I started talking and forgot to get my moisture out. So would it have been devastating? Probably not. 
um, because of where I'm located in the US that the moisture is not as much here. There's not as much humidity. Um, it is hot today. So I got my pre-press and got it out. Again, it would have probably stuck if I would have missed it, but we want to just make sure that we're doing the right application all the time. So got my number lined up, Smith 21, Teflon sheet and a quick press and go from there. So keep in mind, right? We've, we've looked at a couple of different products, but, and they go to different arenas. We only, I only want to express that the, there's certain products that just act better for your application. All right. Move this out of the way and give it a warm to hot peel. Just make sure we're stuck and peel it up. Now you might ask, what if it wasn't perfect when I went to peel it up? That's okay. If we can pull it up and get it to peel or we just lay it back down, give it another quick press to make sure we have our pressure and our time and our temperature right. And then we should be able to pull it no problem. But that first initial is just to make sure that I feel good about it, which I normally do. And then you'll get to where you're just peeling, peeling, peeling away. So beautiful name and number on there. No problems. Now if it's cooled down. I'm gonna give it another second and then I'm gonna stretch it for you. Now I've got another little volleyball and again, I'm trying to upsell. I'm trying to get as much profit margin from each jersey that I can. So a quick little upsell. Hey, let's put a little volleyball by the wrist. Um, it looks kind of cool. I like it. It's another application. Now it's three instead of two. And we get a little bit extra money, right? Volleyball is one of those things that have huge, huge leagues and huge travel ball teams or travel teams that go to difference. And they might have two or 300 girls. So two or 300, you know, at one more application, add another two or $3 to all their jerseys and all the different colors of jerseys. I mean, it really adds up to a better profit line, right? So we're gonna do something a little bit different. Because I have the sleeve, because I have this seam right down the middle, I don't have a platen that really can get underneath it. I could put a print perfect pad in there. I could cut it up a little bit more and stick it in. The problem with that is I've got a real hard seam right underneath the product that's gonna cause me a little bit of issue even with that print perfect pad. So what I'm gonna do is use a pillow. Um, and with that pillow, I'm gonna kind of line it up, make sure that this sleeve is in the right spot. I'm gonna lay it down, kind of even it out a little bit, make sure it's not pulling. And then I'm going to cover it up, spin it around, flatten my pillow, adjust my temperature and get the moisture out all in one get go, right? So it's obviously pretty thick in there. So we'll back that out. Helps if I uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. So perfect. My pressure's at a medium pressure, even with the pillow. Now it's going to be off because that pillow gives a little bit. So we're going to go a little bit more just to make sure we're in the right spot. All right. You ask what that is. I can see it now. You know, how much do you go up or down for that? It's hard to say. You're going to know when you close your press down all the time that your pressure changes a little bit with the different things that you put into it, right? As this pillow gets a little bit thinner, it will feel a little bit different. So I got my placement down. It's just about a finger from the bottom. As long as I'm doing most of the application, I know that they'll all be the same because again, I'm doing it all, right? Um, if I had to put some parameters around that, I could put something on the wall, hit it accordingly. So we'll close it down. Again, my IQ, my IQ already went to the application temperature because we did the pre-press and it should be ready to go when I oh, turn it over. So spin it away, remove my cover. Again, it is a warm to hot peel. Give it a second, a little bit of a pull and peel it off. And I got a great application there on the sleeve. Now, I wanted to show you the stretch in that Premium Plus. Obviously, it gives a great stretch. This jersey doesn't really stretch to top to bottom because it's only a two-way stretch. So on that side, 
really great stretch and rebound. And it looks fantastic. Now, keep in mind, it's going to stretch better with, there's, with the holes. We'll allow it to give it a little bit more. And on the front, there's less coverage, so it stretches even better. All right? Looks fantastic. Okay. Are you ready for some questions? Shoot. Okay. So the first one is from Rich. Mm. What is the laser machine you're using? So the laser machine I'm using now is just my eyeballs, right? Laser focused. Um, but we, Hotronics does have a laser set that you would set by the side of the machine. It would reach down and put laser alignment systems. So as long as you're doing the same size jersey, you can align your lasers and then your placement would be fairly easy. The dual air fusion comes with those laser alignments on them. Um, I like those, especially when I'm doing football jerseys. I like the laser alignment when you're doing football jerseys because you can line that bottom bar of the shoulder pads straight up on a laser line. Then you've got the same application process every single time. So it works out really well, but it is a separate piece that doesn't come on this unit, does come on the fusion the dual air fusion, and then you can buy it separate. I think it's 350 in that area, but well worth every penny. Okay, John, we have about three minutes and there are a few questions. Um, okay. What's the distance to the top of the design on the volleyball, on the V-neck? So it's all a little bit different, right? Um, from here, I've got two fingers. I normally use a standard of about two fingers. Obviously everybody's fingers are a little bit different. So about an inch, inch and a half is probably where I like to be. Um, it's a ladies jersey. So you wanna get it obviously a little bit above that bust line um, to make sure that the logo doesn't sit low. It sits up high and in the right line of sight. So just a little tip to consider, make sure on a V-neck or a ladies jersey, it's a little bit higher than on a men's jersey. Okay, Doug asks, is there an advantage to a laser or vinyl cutter? Um, I mean, there's definitely a mm -hmm. advantage to both, right? A vinyl cutter is gonna save you money probably in the long run on material because you're cutting it yourself. However, you're going to have some time in labor to weed it all the way, right? So you got to balance that. I would say to go to the resource page and look at that, the, the resources that are there. Josh and Zach wrote a fantastic profit guide showing you the difference in where money's at. I suggest you read through that, but it's all time, right? Time is money. Somebody doing it for you is going to cost you more in product than time doing it yourself, right? Laser, the same way. Um, I like to use grids a lot of times where I'll take a piece of cardboard, especially if I'm doing die cuts, and I'll cut that area, even a Teflon sheet, out in the area. So you got a name bar across the top, and you've got logos here or numbers here. You can just drop them in the area, remove this, and now you've got a grid. So that works perfectly too. Um, so there's a lot of different options. I would say do a little bit of research, try what works for you and kind of go from there. Pamela wants to know, doesn't air conditioning help keep moisture out? So you're basically, depends on the air conditioning. If you're putting a, the humidity obviously brings moisture into the garments, the garment traps it and, um, you know, it's in there. When you close it down, it steams off. So if you're in the south, southeast, you definitely want to pre-press. Um, but you just want to get in the habit of it all the time. Not only is it to get rid of moisture out, but it is to get rid of some of the micro or antibacteria stuff that they ship them, they coat them with to ship the garments over. Um, it just kind of cleans the garment up. So if you have a chemical on top of it to stop bacteria or that from being on the boat or anything there, it just gets it out of the garment, right? We don't know whether they're coated with, um, but pre-press, you know, a lot of people forget to do it, but it is something that you really should just do anyway. Um, again, I almost didn't do it on that backside, but probably could have got away with it without an issue. The, the air conditioner pulling the moisture out, obviously it's filtered. I don't know that, you know, it's going, the air's going through a cold area. So I'd imagine it puts some moisture back in it. Um, 
So that I can't really speak to. I would just say as a, as a key, always do it. Okay. This, it's uh, 10 till the hour, so our time is up. All right. So thanks for joining us. Um, we'll, we're going to end it here. We're going to allow you to go get time to go to the next session. Remember, check out that resource page on the Heat Press for Profit. There's some great things there to download and read through and look at. And thanks again for coming. <laughs>